Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown. Uh, buying a 12-inch tablet PC with Thunderbolt 3 support can be a bit of a challenge. The ASUS Transformer Book uh, T303UA um, is actually marketed against the Surface Pro 4 and the new Surface Pro. The Surface Pro 4 with the i5 CPU seems a bit expensive when you consider you can actually get the, uh, the 2017 version for close to $1,000 now, and I would consider that being a good uh, competitor to this ASUS. Now, unlike the Surface Pro, the ASUS T303UA comes with an Entrig pen, and it also comes with a, with a keyboard. And you can buy it from uh, Newegg for $950, or like me, get a refurbished one for $670, which is nice savings, and you do get three months of uh, warranty with it. Now, other than the included peripherals, one big selling point for the ASUS is that it has that uh, Thunderbolt 3 port with two PCI Express lanes whilst the Surface Pro has a mini display port. This is great if you want to use it with an external graphics dock and a game at decent settings. Because let's face it, with its Intel i5 6200U uh, CPU and HD520 graphics, it struggles to game even at 720p and low settings. Here are some results from my GTX 1080 gaming box. And if you haven't seen that uh, video, click up here and uh, at QHD, you can actually play at very high settings in Rise of the Tomb Raider at 60 FPS or 91 FPS at, uh, in Doom Ultra settings. Now, good luck doing that on the Surface Pro. Now, my unit comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, it's a SATA SSD, but that's okay because at this price point, you get a decent 480 megabytes per second write and 530 megabytes per second read. Now, it boots up fairly fast at 26 seconds and the Windows Hello camera works pretty well. The front camera is a 2 megapixel versus the 5 on the Surface Pro and the 13 megapixel on the rear. The latter is okay for shooting photos in decent light, but you wouldn't, um, I wouldn't recommend it for any fast-paced video recording. Even panning side to side, it makes quite the, a blurry image. On the left-hand side, there is a combo headphone and mic jack, a volume rocker, and a micro SD card slot that just sticks out just enough so that you press on it to release it. Now, some people have complained that it's perhaps you know, a little bit easy to press and uh, if you mistake it for the volume rocker. Now on the right hand side, there is a single USB 3, an HDMI port and a Thunderbolt port. Now personally, I prefer having the HDMI port rather than a display port like you get on the Surface Pro because you know, most people I think have HDMI cables to attach it to their TVs or older monitors. Connectivity, it has uh, 802.11 AC with YD uh, support which Intel actually dropped uh, in 2015 in favor of Miracast. It also has Bluetooth 4.1. The Thunderbolt 3 port can also be used to connect to the ASUS dock, giving two more USB ports, a USB-C, another HDMI, an Ethernet port, an SD card reader, and a separate audio port. The 45 watt power brick has no USB port like the one on the Surface line, which, which is a shame, um, as that is useful for charging your phone, for instance. It is a USB-C charger, and the good thing about that is when it's connected to an external graphics dock, it is also charged at the same time. To be honest, the battery life though is disappointing. At 25% brightness, I only got about four and a half hours streaming YouTube. Perhaps an undervolt may squeeze out perhaps five hours, but it might struggle to get you through a full workday. Um, but if you are on the road, you can use actually uh, another USB charger, perhaps a car charger, and that be that should be fine. It did work well with my uh, Razer phone charger, for instance. Now at the front, you have two, two watt front firing speakers that are actually pretty good. They produce 73 decibels, and that is as loud as the 15 inch HP Spectre 360. Now like the Surface Pro, the keyboard cover is held in place by magnets, but don't go expecting to carry it around by the keyboard without the tablet falling off. Now I did like the keyboard. The keys seem to have good feedback and they have 1.4 millimeters of travel, but I did not like the trackpad. Sometimes it wouldn't register an input, and the cursor sometimes would just jump around. So if you're using it at a desk, I really recommend using a mouse. Now that being said, I once had a Surface Pro 4 and that would get warm and the screen would scroll by itself and uh, you know, the mouse would jump around there too, but I've, I've never saw, actually saw that here. The keys are backlit white and have three brightness settings. Like with a laptop, if you close the cover, the tablet will go to sleep, but don't expect it to wake up when you open it up like, like you do with an iPad. You still need to press the power button but it definitely makes for a good portable package. You know, weighing in at uh, 1.74 pounds or 790 grams, 
It has, uh, it has a 12.6 inch IPS display with a resolution of uh, 2880 by 1620 and I really did like this display. It responded well to touch and is nice and bright and it's actually brighter than my Yoga 720. It's also very color accurate, perhaps actually one of the best I have seen. It's got 100% of sRGB, 85% of Adobe RGB and 80% of NTSC. This makes it ideal for photo work and I did a quick uh, Adobe Lightroom test converting 50 photos to a video slideshow and this program makes good use of the Intel HD 520 graphics and you know what it nearly matched at the time it took by my overclocked i7 7700K Sager which I think is amazing. Thus it's just as well because the i5 6200U in this is pretty slow. In my handbrake test it took nearly twice as long as the Surface Book 2 with another 15 watt CPU the i7 8650U. Now the multi-threaded Cinebench score got 143 points and that is way behind the 8th other 8th gen 15 watt parts. As mentioned earlier it comes with a nice silver pen that uses Entrick technology so you can actually use the Surface Pen also, you know, should you wish. Now it performs, re it performs really well. It has 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity which is more than enough for note taking and casual artists. But like I said you can also use the new Surface Pen with 4,196 uh, levels of pressure sensitivity. Now it doesn't have a, a magnet to attach it to the, uh, the tablet nor does the tablet have a USB uh, dock included so you can't actually clip it say to your USB port. But it does have a clip here so you can actually attach it to your pocket. Now all in all I did like the ASUS Transformer Book T303 UA. If the trackpad was better I would fully recommend it. If you have an application that can make use of the uh, Intel HD520 graphics to accelerate your processing work then it is also recommended. Just don't expect too much out of the, uh, the pokey CPU in here. I do wish the battery uh, would last longer, that is probably one of the major downsides. But it does charge up pretty quickly getting to about 60% in about 50 minutes whilst in standby. And I think for $670 it is quite a good buy, especially considering the ability to use that Thunderbolt 3. Even at full retail price it saves you about $300 versus the Surface Pro when you factor in the pen and the keyboard. Well that's it, hope you found it useful, like, subscribe and I'll see you next time, bye.